Jesus answered him, Why do you call me? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and your mother. The man replied and said to him, Teacher, all of these things I have observed from my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, You are lacking in one thing. Go, sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. At that statement, the man's face fell, and he went away sad, for he had many possessions. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his words. So again, Jesus said to them in reply, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were exceedingly astonished and said among themselves, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For human beings it is impossible, but not for God. All things are possible with God. Peter began to say to him, we have given up everything and we have followed you. Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, there is no one who has given up house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the sake of the gospel who will not receive a hundred times more in this present age. Houses, brothers and sisters and mothers and children and all lands with persecutions and eternal life in the age to come. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Personally, you may not want to show your hands, but if you're willing, I'd like to ask, has anyone here in this community ever received an inheritance?
can kind of see myself in that young man. When I worked for state government and when I worked for university and I oversaw programs, I had my to-do list. Whether it was due weekly or monthly, and I had it pasted in front of my desk on the wall. This report is due here, this report is due here, this report is due here. Sort of obsessive compulsive, but I was good at what I did. I got things accomplished. So I can kind of see where this guy is coming from. Maybe some of you have a bucket list. I do. Got a couple of things that I've already accomplished. Cheated on a couple of them. <laughs> One of the things I wanted to do was take a hot air balloon ride. <laughs> also, I was skydiving, but I'm going to do <laughs> Went to a Catholic church picnic during one summer. They had a hot air balloon. And they'd taken people up maybe 15, 10, 15 feet. And I'm like, well, that's not exactly a ride. <laughs> But if I can make it into that basket and I go up 10 to 15 feet and then make it down safely, whoosh, cross that off my bucket list. I love it. So I cheat. I went up to 10 feet, brought it back down, like, okay, I'm done. I can count that. Still may make it to a balloon bag during derby today. Now I don't have to go all the way up and take that. Right? That basket was a little crazy. Um, but hey, we did. So maybe some of you have your to-do list. Have your life in silence. It's very interesting today that Jesus kind of destroys those silence. It's very interesting what he says to the young man. There's a little more you have to do. You're going to get, you're just about there. You've got 98%. So you're almost 100%. Just a little more. I have to be a priority in your life. I have to be a priority in your life. Young man has a lot of things going on. And he kind of walks away sad. He has some stumbling blocks in front of him in his relationship with God and with Jesus. Now, the story, we don't know the ending. I like to be positive thinking. So I'm thinking, okay, the guy went away sad, but maybe he went home. After he went home, he spent some days in prayer. He began rethinking what Jesus said to him. And maybe one by one, one step at a time, one little thing at a time, he began getting rid of any obstacles that stood between him and his God. Didn't have to be all of these. So maybe he made that step. Little by little. And we have to think, what are the obstacles in our life from keeping God as a priority? Maybe fear. I'm not worthy to be loved by God. Some people may think that. Went back to my two moments ago where I was ordained, spent 10 years in ministry a couple years ago. And I thought, well, I'm here, I'm going to do this. Well, let's see about this. Rethink parts of my life. So I went to the cathedral where I was ordained a deacon and a priest. I spent some time there in prayer. I thought about all those things that went on in those days and all the people that were there and the music that was played. We had ever sin. Our song this morning was the first song for that. Yes. Kind of brought back memories today. Then I went to the first parish that was an associate pastor. We had put a brand new table in, kind of modern. I thought about all those people and the things we had gone through. Then I went to the second parish. 
that I was an assistant. And that one had been redone about five years, remodeled about five years before I got there. So the altar had been moved, the table had moved to the side of the church. And we had stadium seating all the way around it. So you can see clearly everything that was going on, no matter where you stood. And to the right was the baptismal pool for adults to be baptized. And on top of that was a smaller pool for kids. And then off to the side was a day chapel. We had a small table altar there, seats on both chairs on both sides, the tabernacle was placed at the front. And I loved weekday liturgies there because the people were there for the daily mass. We were in a small group, we were close. And so I would ask that I would give a short reflection and ask them for their thoughts on the meetings. And several of them had some really good reflections and thoughts about that we just share our faith. When I went back to visit them, I was really sad. There was a rope, council rope, and some stands to hold them in front of the tabernacle between the people <coughs> and the tabernacle. And I thought, me personally, it was a message that we, we want to keep a bear between us and our God. God wants an intimate relationship with each of us. He doesn't want to bury you in front. He wants a close relationship. No. Fear can have two meanings. Forget everything and run. And be able forget everything and run. Or lose <coughs> everything and rise. F E A R. Face everything and rise. I'd like to think today that our young man went home and faced everything. Today, we are called to that challenge to look at possibly what obstacles do we place in our relationship to our God. And maybe like that young man, reflect on the gospel today, and maybe just one little obstacle at a time, grow closer to our God. And what do we get? An inheritance. Enjoy.